Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm going to teach you how to cure your own bacon. This is something we did for almost my whole childhood. My mom was actually the one that developed this recipe from scratch. So this is a family recipe that has been a secret for years and years, but I'm finally letting you guys in on the secret because I feel like it's just too good not to share. Actually, in our family when I was growing up, bacon was so highly prized that whenever anyone would say, anything annoying, we would jokingly tell them, you're off the bacon list. It was just kind of a running family joke because that would be the worst thing ever to be off the bacon list and not getting more bacon because that was like the best food around. <laughs> so it's still a joke we have even as adults we'll tell each other we're off the bacon list. I love being involved in the process of growing and curing and storing our meat. I like to know what's going on in each process. People nowadays are just so disconnected from how their food is grown. I've, I've actually met people who don't know that chicken from the grocery store comes from a real chicken like with feathers that lays eggs. Like they're just so disconnected from where food comes from, which I'm so grateful that we are blessed to live on homestead in the country and we, I grew up doing this stuff and my kids will grow up doing this stuff and it will just be a normal part of life for them and their families. Even if you're not someone who raises a ton of animals or raises all their food for the year. Like it doesn't have to be extreme, but you can know the processes, you can know how the farmer raised the hog you're eating. You can be involved in what kind of curing method you want used. So I think it's just really important to be involved in, in the process of growing your own food. I find it so fascinating how people back in the day used to know how to do some really, really cool things. Like they could literally take a piglet, just pour and they could raise it all the way to maturity they could butcher it themselves, do the entire butchering process. They can use every single part of the pig. They know how to tan the hide and use the head for pig head cheese or like, they could do something with every single part, which I think is so fascinating that people just knew how to do this stuff. And it's kind of something that we've lost over generations of processed foods. So today we are bringing back a little bit of that awesomeness with curing our own bacon. It was a couple months ago that we bought a whole hog from a local farmer that we know. It's actually one of my friends who raised them, but we bought a whole hog. We know how they were raised. We know what they were fed. We know the butcher that processed them. They were totally willing to let us come actually watch the butchering process, which I ended up being too busy to go, but it's nice to know they're open to have you come. Like They go out to the farm, you can go out there with them and see the whole process. And then the butcher takes it back and processes all the meat, cuts it up, packages it. You have to tell them like how thick you want your pork chops and how heavy each of their hams are and all sorts of stuff. So I elected to cure the bacons myself because this recipe is better than any other bacon I've ever tried. So we always, if we get a hog, we always cure the bacon ourselves. So anyway, without further ado, let's get right into this recipe. So what you'll need for this recipe is a two and a half pound slab of pork belly. So when you get the pork belly from the butcher, it comes in big slabs and you actually have to cut it in two slices like you would see bacon from the store. Two and a half tablespoons of salt, one and a half tablespoons of organic cane sugar, one tablespoon of black peppercorns, one teaspoon of fennel seed, one teaspoon of caraway seed, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, one teaspoon of dried thyme, two bay leaves, and one garlic clove that's finely chopped. So that is your curing recipe for a pork belly. <laughs> My son is sitting in the high chair over here being a little noisy. That is the amount of ingredients you'll need for a two and a half pound slab of pork belly, which you'll most likely have more than that. We had quite a bit more of that because we got a whole hog, so you obviously have to adjust the ingredients accordingly. So that is the first step, is you weigh out all the pork belly slabs that you have to find out the total weight. We ended up having 26 pounds of pork belly, which is awesome. So you take that total weight, 26 pounds, and you divide it by two and a half because that is the amount of pork belly called for in the original recipe. And that came out to 10.4. So that basically means you multiply each ingredient in the recipe by 10.4 to get the correct amount of ingredients. So 
I totally had to ask my husband how to do this because I am terrible at math, but that is how you do it. <laughs> so now at least I have it on a video for next year when I do this, I don't have to ask Luke again how that goes. <laughs> Once you've figured out how much extra you have to multiply the recipe by, you measure out the correct amount of ingredients, all the dry ingredients, into a big bowl. Everything besides the pork belly, just all the dry ingredients. The third step is to cut the pork belly slabs into pieces that are small enough to fit in Tupperwares. So I went and found all the biggest Tupperwares I had, all the biggest ones I had, and then I used, for the rest of the pork bellies, I used Ziploc bags. I will link the ones down below that I recommend that are actually the ones we used to use when I was growing up. I have ones that are like half that size. They work okay, but bigger ones you can fit almost a whole, whole slab in there. Step four is start rubbing your dry mixture all over the pork belly. So you obviously mix up the dry ingredients first. I don't know if I said that already. But once it's mixed up, you start rubbing it all over the pork belly slab pieces. And you want it to get it really well rubbed in there, just be really generous with it. As you get each one coated with the spices and everything, you can put it in the tub where it's gonna go in. And if you have some of the spice mixture left over at the end, I just divide it between all the containers and I just kind of pour it over the top so nothing gets wasted. And that's yeah. how you deal with that. Once you have all of the pork belly slabs and the spices and everything in the Tupperwares, you're going to put all the lids on and find spots for them in the refrigerator. And you're going to leave them in the refrigerator for seven days. But each day you go over there and you you go in the refrigerator and you flip the Tupperwares over. So this first day, they're right side up. The next day, they're gonna be upside down on top of the lids. So you wanna make sure you snap the lids down all the way so they don't leak, because that's gonna make a big old mess in your refrigerator. But I find that as long as the lids are sealed, I haven't had a leakage problem so far. So they stay in there for seven days, being turned over once a day. So after a whole week, it is time to smoke the bacon. So you're going to take them out of your, of your refrigerator, take them out of the Tupperwares, and rinse them all off. You don't have to be too thorough, it's just kind of a quick rinse. You want to leave some of the seasonings on because it does make it more flavorful as it's smoked with some of the seasonings. You just don't want it like totally caked on there. You're going to let your bacon slab sit out on a rack or something, something that's got air circulation underneath. I like to use my cooling racks that I use for bread baking or something. But you want to let them sit out in the air at room temperature to dry off a little bit so they're not sopping wet when you put them in the smoker. So just like 30 minutes or something is fine. I did mine in two batches, so I actually ended up leaving the second batch out to dry for quite a long time, like while the other one was smoking. So it's not a big deal if you just do it for a long time, because mine turned out all fine. So you're going to get your smoker all ready. You want to get the temperature up to 200 to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. We especially love to use hickory wood or pellets in the smoker. It gives it an extra good flavor. It's at least what my family likes. We use apple wood. You can use all kinds of different woods or pellets in there, different types. You can just play around with it and each year try something different and see what your family likes best. My mom has a very fancy Traeger smoker that she lets me come over and use. So my mom is totally the smoking expert. I don't know a ton about this. I'm just, uh, this is just what she told me to do. So. So you're gonna leave the bacon in the smoker until the internal temperature comes up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the bacon's done. You're gonna take all the bacon out of the smoker and let it cool off, and then it's time to slice it up. If you need to put it in your refrigerator until the next day, which I did, because mine was done right in the evening, and then I brought the kids home, and it was time to make dinner, and I was like, I'm not gonna slice this up right now. So I put it in the refrigerator until the next day, and that was totally fine. But you are, at this point, going to slice it all up. Now, my family loves thickly sliced bacon. It's just more bacon per slice. It's a good a good win-win situation. Especially since it is really hard to slice bacon really thinly like you would get at the grocery store with just a kitchen knife. My grandma has one of those kind of deli meat slicer things that she can get it a bit thinner, but with just a kitchen knife, and especially since we do like thicker bacon anyway, that works totally fine for us. So now that they're all sliced up, I'm gonna talk about how I like to store them. I personally like to weigh them out into one pound packages because that's about, that's a good amount to eat for a meal for our size of family. As we have more kids, I might end up packaging them into two pound packages, but however much you guys eat during a sitting or if you want to have enough for a meal plus some leftovers, you can weigh it out and get them in packages. Now, technically, it's better to use like saran wrap and then freezer paper I'm out of freezer paper right now, still. I talked about this in my video about curing hams, but I use Ziploc bags for all the bacon. And so far, storing Ziploc bags has been fine. 
So whatever you have on hand. If the Ziploc bags didn't work, I would recommend wrap wrapping them in saran wrap and then putting them in a Ziploc bag, just have a double layer of protection. But, and then you're done. And you can just take packages out as you need them and fry them up. I really love this bacon, not like too crispy, especially if it's thick slices of bacon. You just fry it until it's just cooked, but not like at all too darkened. Like, you know what I mean? Like just cooked where it's not raw, but it's not really getting dark at all yet. That's the perfect, the perfect way to do it for me. <laughs> and for my husband and kids, they like it the best that way too. Seeing all those packages of bacon in the freezer all lined up just makes me so happy. It just reminds me of all the hard work that I went through to get them and just all the memories of buying the hog and getting it butchered and curing the bacon and it's just kind of a good feeling. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how we cure our bacon and I hope that this was helpful. If you guys try it, let me know how you like it because so far everyone who's tried this recipe has loved it and has never gone back. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!